Okay, now we're gonna make the swarm trap. So you're gonna need to get yourself some old brood comb. You can see there's cocoons and yeah, it's brown, it's nasty. And then there's some also some good comb. This is melted down brood comb. I'm gonna just cook this down until it becomes liquid wax. As you can see, the wax is melted completely. It's still got the cocoons in it and all the little baby bees. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this. Uh, if you're like me and you're doing this inside, make sure you got some old cardboard. You can see my son had this as a fort at one time. We're gonna take this and we're gonna paint this wax right on here. This allows the bees to be able to run around on top of this because without this these bees are not going to move in this bucket they have no reason to come in here this wax makes the bees feel like bees have already been living in this bucket so if another bee colony has lived in here there's even more reason for the bees to live in it themselves there's the top done We'll do the inside. You want to paint this on? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Don't get it everywhere. Try to get it inside the bucket. Look at me. Get it inside the bucket. Don't get it on the lid. You have to be fast because it'll cool off. Paint it really rough in there. There you go. Start at the bottom. Work your way up. You have to get more paint. It dries. If, well, it doesn't dry. It cools off. Get more paint. It cools off really fast. There you go. You gotta be fast at it. Go. Get in there. Paint it. As soon as it cools off, get some more. Keep going. Get some more. There you go. Paint it. As soon as it cools off, get some more. You gotta be fast. Paint upwards like this, watch. Sling it, twirl it so it stays on there and then paint, 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 paint. Spit, twirl it so it stays on there, paint, 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 paint. Careful, don't sling it on me, bud. What are you doing? Okay, let me finish it. Let's get these little spots you missed. Perfect. There you go. Are you gonna have to take some on the outside? Yeah. It? Yeah. So we're gonna drill a hole. Okay. <clears throat> now you can see the insides painted, both this bucket and the lid. 
so the bees have something to walk on and also to put their comb on. Now, you're gonna wanna take the bucket and you're gonna find the center where you're gonna put the hole. <clears throat> what I like to do is I like to put the hole underneath this lip. So as it rains, the water can go right over the lip without getting inside this bucket. Because again, bees are not going to want to live in here if, it, if the conditions from outside, the rain, the wind, get inside this bucket. So, you're going to take this, because again, the bees can't walk on this. You're going to take this, and we're going to wipe us a little spot here. Also, when you do this, it allows the smell what's in the bucket also to be on the outside of the bucket to attract the swarm better. Because it may smell awesome in this bucket, but if you got a little three quarter inch hole here, there's not much of the smell gonna get out for the bees to find. Okay, so now this bucket's done. We have the front waxed up, we have the inside waxed up, we have the top waxed up. Good. Now, the next process is, is we'll drill the holes in it and we'll talk location. All right, let's talk swarm lure. You can just leave this just like this. The smell, I mean, this smell is all bees and it's very attractive, but I like to use a swarm lure whether it be Swarm Commander, which is a really good product. It's extremely expensive, but it's a good product. Uh, and then this is from Man Lake, and it's a Swarm Lure as well. All it is is it's, I, I believe, lemongrass inside a little tube in here. Can I Let's actually open this up. I've never seen what it looks like. Can I see? Yes, son. Can you just give me a second, please? Touch it. Yes, son. There you go. That's all that's in it. Some little vials with some lure in it. You can see there, it's got a little lure in it. You mean uh, it's a little tube with something on it? Yep. Wow. So you can use either of these. What I like to do on my new traps, I used to just put this in here and only this, but this has a it has a amount of time before the scent kind of goes away. So nowadays I like to just go one spray and then duct tape this guy on the inside. So this is long term, this is instant. And the mixture of the two, we'll see if it works. You don't need these again. These, these are not needed. You could just do this right here. And you may have, what, eight bucks inside this thing. Uh, and use this. If you want to be a little bit more expensive and this isn't working for you, go with the lure. So on this next process, obviously how the bee is going to get in there. So I got a three quarter bit. It's a paddle bit. We got a drill. Again, you don't need this. If you want to be extremely cheap, you don't have a drill, you don't want to buy a bit, just take you a knife and cut you a hole in here, big enough to where your finger can go inside this. Uh, and then you go, well, how are the bees going to breathe? Take and make you some tiny little holes down here in the bottom and along the inside here so the rain can't get in here. That's all you need. For me, I got a drill, I got a drill bit, so we're going to put a hole in here. And try to put it up inside that lip as far as you can. Oh, where is it? Can I have it? Yes, sir. So there's our entrance for the bees. Now we'll switch bits. This is a, let me look at it real quick. 764 drill bit and again you're gonna make little bitty drill holes up under that lip that's all we're doing right there just a little bitty drill hole to create some ventilation and you want to do this after you're done painting it because if you make this little hole and then you paint it that's going to be waxed over
Same thing with this, it's gonna be all waxed over. So we make a few holes in the slip. Let's go five on this one. And then we'll go four on the bottom. out here somewhere. There we go. We'll cut this wax off and this plastic. What's that? What about that? No, they're good. Let me see. Again, this needs no holes in the top of this. Rain will get inside here. So we leave this solid. Now, we have our holes on the bottom, holes along the sides. On the lip. On the, under the lip, so rain can't get in. We have our entrance hole in here. Now let's lure this thing. So I go one spray, that's it. Put the lid on. Again, this is good to go as it is. We could go put it in there, it's got the one spray. The first swarm I caught out there this year, this is exactly how I did this. Put it, it out there. It smells just like bees. But they should be a bee right I bought now. these for a reason to stick in here. So, Get some tape. It uh, smells good. Yes, son, it smells beautiful. It's because it's lemongrass. And we will take the entrance, we'll go over to the side of the entrance, and we'll tape this in place. Now we have our swarm lure in here. We have it scented with Swarm Commander. We got it painted with wax, holes drilled in it. This trap is ready to go into the woods. All I do is, so let's say, here's the tree limb. We're gonna hang this guy on a tree limb like that. Well, Leave it to be. As you can see in my my, uh, my first swarm trap, this is how high I had it, and I caught a swarm in it. People say 30 feet, 5 feet, 10 feet off the ground. Mine was 2 and a half feet off the ground, and I caught a swarm. It doesn't extremely matter. It's more location than it is in the sun, out of the sun. Mine was completely in the woods where there was no sun even touching this. Uh, and it was sitting right on a limb like this. The problem is, is when you put that on a limb, this bucket can sway and move. So what I also do is I take a bit of wire and I wrap this wire around the mid section of this bucket and the tree and twist it tight. That way this bucket is firmly in place and only sways with the tree. I put these on T-post. You can put these anywhere. And the cool thing about this is, you have very little money in it. If this gets stolen, oh well. This is just a bucket. You can just go make you another bucket, you're good to go. The problem with buying swarm traps and making swarm traps, I mean, 60, 70, 80 bucks for a swarm trap. If you make them out of junk wood, again, you're not as mad when it's stolen, but still, you are pretty mad. Here we are, you got a bucket. If this is stolen, what is somebody gonna use it for? It's got holes in it. Uh, other than just another swarm trap. Hopefully you found this video interesting and you like my swarm trap ideal. And also don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe.